Welcome or welcome back to my Croft Kitchen series. For episode 7, I'm going to be showcasing a traditional island dish of ling. I'm keeping it simple as the components with us are very tasty. Keep watching to find out more. My dish today is centered around this fantastic fish. I've got a lovely ling fillet here. I've decided to do a take on an old island traditional recipe of uh, fish and cantropic. My choice of fish today would be ling. Uh, as a family growing up, Gran would often cook this on a, a Saturday lunchtime. Uh, when I say cook, I mean almost boil to death. So if anyone was caught in the process of branching through the kitchen, they would have the lingering smell uh, attached to their clothing. Uh, but I'll talk a bit more about the ling shortly. My camping remains for the dish today. I've got some lovely uh, cod livers here, which Ali Gunn from Port uh, gave me, which inspired me to create this dish. You can use ling livers as well, but cod livers fantastic as well. I've got some lovely smoked streaky bacon, some broad beans, which I'll show you how to uh, process as well. Lovely fresh sage into the dish. Quite strange adding a bit of sage to the fish, but I'll explain also later on with that. A good chunk of butter, some lemon to freshen the dish up. But we'll start off with our cankropic. I'm going to start off by preparing the onion. I'm just going to roughly, oh, put it first. I'm going to roughly chop this onion. I'm going to take the hassle out of preparing this by using the food processor. We could chop it by hand, but yeah, it's make life easy for ourselves. First of all, in with the onion. Now we're going to catch this at almost uh, a fine chop. And next for the livers. Now the livers been nice and tidied and trimmed. Usually you'll find little, maybe other green little pieces on there or black, but it's all been tidied. You can see how, how clean and neat they are. So I'll pop them into the bowl. So in the bowl, I've got one small onion to the quantity of fish livers. I don't have an exact recipe for this, but what I'll do is, I'll all become clearer in the next process. That is plenty. <laughs> Let's see. So what I'll do is, I'll just give this a wee tidy up. I'll take my mix. So you saw how quickly the um, the fish was the fish level spread pureed along with the onion. You can see they're just finely chopped. Now next, I'm going to add some fine oatmeal. We'll start off. It's a little quantity. Now what will happen is the oatmeal is going to soak up the liver fairly quickly, which will give us an indication of when to just slow down with the oatmeal. You don't want it too slack, and we certainly don't want it too dry, because remember when this is cooking, it's going to thicken up as well. Now. The cantropic itself growing up. I remember when I was younger, eating it no problem. Lovely, absolutely fantastic dish. But for some reason, 
as we get slightly older, we decided just not, it wasn't for me at all, and just went off it completely. But I've been one around again with it. It's an absolutely fantastic accompaniment to the fish. So we can see how it's just now it's soaking it all up. And one more spoon and that'll be plenty. Lovely. Now to that, I'm just gonna add a little whiff of salt. And then that the, the little shot slightly salty anyway. Followed by a bigger whiff of black pepper. Like a little slight kick from the black pepper. Bubbly. So, what we'll do now is ready for our packaging. I'll take some tin foil. The same size as the chopping board. Now, in the bygone days, the fish heads would have been purchased with the fish itself. Don't have the fish head. The stuffing would have been placed into the fish heads and then just wrapped in greaseproof paper and steamed. You could also steam it over a, uh, a pan of water, just stirring it every now and again, it's covered. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in the tin foil and we're going to poach it. Then we're just going to take our tin foil and we're going to wrap it very carefully into a neat sausage. And I think for extra security, I'll add another sheet. As this will be submerged in water. What I'll do is I'll just twist this end, followed by the other end. And we're just creating a slight crack up. Yeah, twist it, you can feel it tightening up here. And then we'll just push them in slightly. And there's a little cracker ready for poaching. So the water's just, just bubbling. Just pop that in, pop it in away from us. No splashes. I'll put it back on. And that's gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes. Now onto the fish. If you're not familiar with ling, it's very similar to cod. Uh, flaky texture wise, but with more, a stronger flavor. I've purchased this from Ronnie Scott and I very kindly asked him to pin bone it for me. It's a nightmare of a job, but it's well worth it. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my sharp knife. I want two steaks out of this. So, bum, bum. Just stay through. I could keep that piece on, but I think the dog has a cat can maybe fight over later on. Now with either a sharp knife, we're going to score the fish. I'm using a blade here. Being in mind it's highly dangerous. And the reason for this is as the fish cooks, I don't want it turning in on itself we won't get an even finish to the finished dish. There we have it. So there we have our two ling steaks ready for the frying pan. But before that, we'll get on with the sauce. And for our sauce, I'm going to start off by preparing the shallot. The reason I've chosen the shallot is it's slightly sweeter than an onion. And it's got a slight hint of garlic in there as well. The harshness of an onion. Just put 
Okay, let's run up fine chalk to this. Now for the smoked pancetta, again with a sharp knife. And now for the broad beans. These are frozen broad beans, they've been cooked for like two to three minutes, just in boiling water, no salt. If we add salt, what I find is that the skins become quite hard. Now, if you've got a few people in the kitchen, there's a nice uh, job for everyone to mug in because it does take a wee bit of time. I've got about 200 grams of broad beans. So what you can do is, I can just pop them out of the skins, just like so. Oop, flew straight into the bowl. What I find is, if you leave the skins on, they're, they're kind of rubbery. We want this to be pleasant. You can see already the lush green inside these little belters. So there's our shelled broad beans. Another key point I'd like to make is uh, that frozen is good, tin variety not good. And now to finish the sauce. Now for the sauce, I'm going to start off by adding a drizzle of oil to the pan. Followed by our shallots. Now we're going to cook this with any colour. Something softened, sweetened and translucent. Now followed by our smoky pancetta. Just a little dry it up. I just want the pancetta just golden. I don't want anything really colour in there. So next we're going in with a new addition. Some slight leaks. A couple of additions to this the leaks and the peas. That's all down to my mise en place and just thinking along the way. But we're evolving. That's what going along with the dish. Right, some frozen peas. Followed by our broad beans. Do you mind if we have been cooked? We're just boiling them through. At this stage, we just want the leeks to be just cooked. Our broad beans to be cooked through. And the peas remaining with a little bit of Now to that, I'm going to just slowly and I'm going to turn the beans off at this point. And we'll start adding, oops, <laughs> we'll start adding our butter bit by bit. And what we want to do is we want to emulsify it. And what I mean by that is we want to keep the shine in the sauce while it's separating too much. So we'll just end with the rest of the butter. And just keep just gently stirring that. And that will all just come together nicely, creating our sauce. Now also just to help it emulsify that wee bit more. 
I will add a little rasp of lemon zest. Let me get that the oils from that. And just squeeze, squeeze of lemon to freshen up. That's going to help create the base of the sauce. And the lemon smell probably fresh. Touch of black pepper, just a little bit. And the final addition to our sauce is just going to be two to three small leaves of fresh sage. Fragrant. And that's going to be plenty. You're probably thinking sage with fish, but it is it's a welcoming kiss to the dish. So we'll set that aside and get on with the fish. So now we're ready to fry our fish. Just gonna add a little drizzle of oil to a hot pan. You see that's almost starting to smoke. Lovely. We'll take our ling fillets. Skin side down. And we have it. The temperature on this is, is full on, so we're going to leave it two or three minutes. We're not going to touch it, the more we prod it, the more we move it about, the more tendency it has to stick. So we're going to leave it alone and get the skin nice and crisp. So you can see at this stage we're going to an almost opaque consistency on the fish. So I'm going to carefully... Lovely. Lovely crisp skin on there. Now at this stage, we just want to cut the heat out all together and the, the fish will cook in the remaining heat of the pan. Now for plating up, we're going to start off with our kiln cropping. So we'll just open up our cracker. Plating up, I thought I have to add potatoes to the dish. Uh, growing up, uh, potatoes were all saved with the dish, so I thought, hmm, if we're going to take the memory this far, we're as well putting it on the plate. So I've got some lovely new potatoes. I'm just going to crush them with the skins on, because that's the way they would have been saved at the table. I know it's very 90s, but it's just all about the memory and putting that on the plate. There's our broad beans. You can see how the sauce is just nice and emulsified. A generous portion of that. Our fish. Just good. And the canthropic. Thought about slicing. But it's, it's just nice and soft. We're going to take a cornell with a canthropic, which is a complement to the dish. There we have it. Seardling. Canthropic stuffing, crushed new potatoes, broad beans, and a butter sauce. Enjoy.